Okay, so let's talk about this elephant in the room. You're here probably because you have an object in your scene floating in your favorite HDR like this, but instead you want to use your environment image as an actual environment with the ground like this, and I assume you have some other object than elephant, and that is totally fine. I don't even know what this is and it's floating anyway, so let's bring the elephant back. But what if your elephant can't control himself indoors? Then you most likely want to place him outside. Well, we are gonna go through the exterior HDRIs as well as the interior environment textures, since those require a bit of a different setup. Okay, let's cut the crap here and get to the business. This might be your first tutorial where we are not going to delete our default cube, but instead we are finally, finally gonna make use of it, as it will be our interior environment object. So this first method that I'm going to show you is basically for interiors. And after this I'll show you the exterior HDRI setup. So just so you know, Blender has now two of these EV renderers and I believe this will work this will work on the new EV, but not with the legacy one. But I always use cycles, so I'm I'm gonna choose that. First I like to jump to the edit mode and translate our cube on Z axis. So our bottom face will be aligned with the origin point, so scaling gets a bit easier like this. Next, let's open the shader editor. And we want to play with the world shader and assign our HDRI as an environment. I downloaded this from the Polyhaven, by the way, and if you want it, I'll leave the link in the description. I'm gonna jump to rendered mode here and there's our texture casting light to the scene. But there's not really a ground here as you might see. So let's wrap this texture onto our cube. We'll jump back to the object here. I will name the material. And use the environment texture in base color input. Just select the HDRI from the dropdown. And it's wrapped around the cube now but not really as we want. So let's bring the texture coordinates with Ctrl T if you have the node frangle add-on enabled. And we wanna use our object as a coordinates. And let's select our cube to be the object here. I'm gonna make our background transparent so it's a bit easier to see what's going on here. Okay, so our cube here has the normals pointing out like this. But since our camera here will most likely to be inside this cube or room, we want the blue side to be pointing inside like this. So just jump into the edit mode and select all the faces, Alt N and flip the normals. Now our normals are pointing inside and this makes the navigation around the cube a bit easier after we enable the back face calling. Okay, so you have to be in a solid mode and then click here and activate the back face calling. And it turns basically every red face invisible. But unfortunately, it only does the trick in the solid mode. And if I jump back to the render view, we have the same problem here. So we can replicate the same effect in the shader nodes pretty easily. I don't actually need this face orientation anymore. We just have to mix our principal shader with transparent. And let's use the back facing as a factor. And our room is a pitch black because even the back face calling is working here. Our room doesn't have any light in it. So if I bring this default light inside the cube, we should see something. It's just a bit bright, so I'm gonna turn down the power. Now, all there is to just play with the texture coordinates and modify our room to match the texture. So I'm gonna start by changing the location of our HDRI on Z axis. Then I'm gonna rotate it on Z axis as well. And try to line it so that those corners of the wall and floor are perpendicular to Y axis.
I think that's a pretty good starting point for our cube. Next, I will select this face and move it along the y-axis. So it'll be like here where there is a corner in our, in our texture. Then let's grab the next wall. It might get a bit dark here to see where the corner actually is but I think it's close enough. Then just do the same with the rest of the walls if needed. And let's also lower our ceiling to match the texture. And we are pretty much done here. You can however improve the realism here to add the light sources to the natural places. In this example those windows would cast all the light into the room, so you could add big area lamps in front of those like this. Just use Alt-D instead of Shift-D to duplicate the instances. It'll make it easier to adjust the power with just this one slider here. Let's actually move our lights as the bit so those are not at the same coordinates as our wall. Now we can lower the power here. You could also add realism here a bit by using this texture also as a bump map. Just decrease the strength. And we can also use it as a roughness map. Let's just add a color ramp between to give us a bit more control. And remember the blacks are shiny parts and the whites are diffused. I actually want to make the floor shiny here, so let's duplicate our room material and name it floor. Assign it to the floor face, and now we can make the floor as shiny as we want. Actually this bump is a bit heavy, but you can play with these settings. Just one more thing you can do here is to add some edge loops here. And extrude those windows a bit out like that. And do that to every window to improve it. And it's done. If I just check it in EV, it looks like it works like a charm with that one too. But with the legacy, it doesn't. Okay, so let's move on to the exterior setup. All right, so same thing here. Let's change it to the cycles. This time we don't need this cube, but instead we will need the we will need a UV sphere. I'm going to scale it 20 times. I'm going to name it dome. In edit mode delete all these vertices below x-axis. Then you can select this outer edge loop and hit F for face. We need to insert it, something like this will do. And let's delete this face. Let's select the outer edge loop again and hit Ctrl F and use grid fill. It seems to be kinda random how these faces will line up 
But if you have an OCD, you can just change the offset to match these middle lines with X and Y axis. Then we want to bevel this corner up here, but first let's apply the scale so it bevels correctly. Make it as round as you want. It doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna shade this whole dome smooth. Now we can start creating our material. I'm gonna name it sky. We will do the ground later. I'm gonna hop into the render mode so I can see what I'm doing here. Sky usually emits light, so let's change this principal PSD to emission and let's use our HDRI as a base color. I'm gonna use this Shengyang Kate from Polyhaven. I'll leave the link to that in description as well. Ctrl T again to add coordinates and let's use object coordinates here as well. I'm not really sure if it matters in this case, but you can select your dome to be the object. Let's do the same normal flip here that we did in the interior scene. So select all your faces, Alt and flip and then we can enable the back face calling again. And again, it only works in a solid mode, so let's tweak our shader to make it work in a rendered mode as well. Mix our emission with transparent and use back facing as a factor. And why does it look like that? Oh, this is not transparent. Whoops. Now you can adjust your set location. The right value here might be depending on your camera position. So for the best results, you might want to adjust it from the camera view. just so everything looks natural. You can obviously scale this bigger or smaller for your needs. Also set rotation might come handy to adjust. All right, so it looks good, but we need to make own material for our ground and I will show you just in a moment why. Let's duplicate our sky material and name it ground. And let's try to assign it to these ground faces. It actually might get a bit easier to see if you disable the backface calling for a moment here. So select these faces and assign your material. I'll just enable the backface calling again. If I add an object to the scene, you might see that there's no shadows whatsoever. And that's because our ground is emitting light at the moment. So let's replace this emission shader with diffuse. And we get this nice shadow, but also we get this not so nice border here. We can fix this by making a gradient mask between emission and diffuse in our sky material. So let's start by mixing our emission with diffuse. Oh, and obviously this texture should be connected to diffuse shader as well. Now Ctrl Shift D to duplicate our mapping node with connections. Then we're gonna add the separate X, Y, Z. And if I show you the set value, it makes this gradient here and it's just what we need. You can adjust the position of it and also the sharpness of it with the color ramp. And then if we use this as a factor, everything that's white should be this emission shader and 
black should be the diffusator. It's actually opposite right now, so we should add the invert node here. And now you can adjust the height of your mask where you need it. To improve realism here, you can add a sun lamp to match roughly with the sun in your HDRI texture. I actually delete the default light from the scene first. Something like that. Now our dome is just blocking the light, so let's select it and disable these three ray visibilities. Then adjust the sun strength, rotation, and you can also adjust the sharpness of the shadows as you like. You can also do the same here, what we did in the interior scene if you want to use this as a bump texture as well. You might just want to turn off the specular. And this one works with EV as well. Okay, so that's that. Hope you learned something. Until next time, bye!